Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rusani Mamshiane, and I'm a research engineer at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, which is popularly known as CSRR in South Africa. Um, my research focus is around emerging technologies such as software-defined networking, network function virtualization, Internet of Things, cloud computing, machine learning, and any other technology that constitute the fourth industrial revolution. My presentation today is of a paper titled A QoS-Based Evaluation of SDN Controllers with particular focus on honest and open daylight SDN controllers. I co-authored this paper with my colleague Temba Shozi, who is also a research engineer at CSI, CSIR. Uh, the structure of my presentation is as follows. First, I'll introduce you to the concept of software-defined networking. Then I'll introduce the problem statement and highlight our contribution. I'll then provide an overview of the controllers under evaluation, as well as the experimental setup and results from the experimental work. Finally, I will present our conclusions and future directions. So what is software-defined networking? Um, software-defined networking has emerged as one of the key enablers to, in, um, to unlock uh, the promises of the envisaged 5G networks. So with SDN, the control logic is decoupled from the data forwarding plane, providing an abstracted global view of the network status to ensure efficient orchestration of network services. So such an architecture results in a three tier architecture where the lower tier is the infrastructure layer, as you can see on the screen. And then the middle tier is the control layer over here. And then the top tier is the application layer. The control layer is basically like the brain uh, or the intelligence of the network. Between these tiers are abstraction layers, namely the northbound interface and the southbound interface. The northbound interface is used by applications from on the application layer to enforce high level policies um, on the underlying infrastructure via the controller, as the controller is a middleman. Based on these uh, policies, the controller uses the southbound interface um, to uh, enforce um, the policies and to also make um, routing decisions for uh, optimal traffic engineering. So some of the southbound interfaces supported by SDN controllers include, but not limited to open flow, there's PSAP, there's also P4, which I forgot to include in the slides, there's I2RS, there's BGP, LS, which is basically used for distributed network deployments. And then on the northbound interface, uh, a prevalent choice for uh, the northbound interface is the RESTful networking protocol. So SDN promises a lot of benefits. One of the important ones is the ability to manage the entire network consistently and holistically, regardless of the complexity of the underlying technology that you're using on your data plane. And that is um, something that is made possible through the convergence of um, disparate forwarding devices, which is again possible um, through the abstraction of the different um, layers. So as the broker between the application plane and the data plane, the controller performance is one of the most critical design metrics uh, meaning that in order to guarantee a high performance or high quality of service, the controller should be able to respond to packet in messages promptly. So to date, a plethora of SDN controllers has been proposed within the research community. However, Open Daylight and Onus have emerged as the ideal choices for large scale SDN deployments, uh, mainly because of the distributed cores. So they are like, centralized SDN controllers, which are used for smaller scale deployments, such as Ryu, Floodlight, and many others. But for this particular um, research, we focused on Open Daylight and Honors, as they are the most prominent controllers, and they are also used for large scale SDN deployment. So both Open Daylight and Honors uh, have multiple releases and are matured in their development. Thus, it is important to compare their performance differences of these controllers since they seem to both offer like um, compelling benefits at first glance. 
So in this work, we carry out a feature-based and performance-based comparison of the latest releases of as, um, Open Daylight and Honors. We believe that this work can be utilized by application developers and service providers to make informed controller selection decisions. So first, we're gonna start with just a, an architectural uh, view of what Open Daylight is. So Open Daylight is an, a modular open source Java-based ASEAN controller. It's hosted by the Linux Foundation and it's used for customizing and automating networks of any scale and size, which is very important. Uh, this controller um, leverages a model-driven software engineering principle that is known as MDSL, as you can see there, which acts as like the brain of this controller. On the southbound interface, it supports a wide range of protocols such as OpenFlow, OFConfig, you have PSAP, OVSDB, P4, and many others. And then on the northbound interface, it supports RESTful APIs and also your NetConf. On the application layer, you can um, integrate your orchestration engines, your load balancing applications, intrusion detection systems, and so on. So to date, there are a total of nine open daylight releases and each new release promises support of emerging use cases such as your IoT, um, such as your integrated NFV management and so on. Next is Honors. So the architecture of Honors is quite simple as you can see. However, it is more complicated than it looks at face value. Uh, Honors is also an open source SDN controller which is pioneered by um, ON Lab and primarily designed to enable service providers to build real SDN solutions through its promise of um, scalability, security and performance. On its north bound interface, it has an abstraction framework that is called the intent framework. The intent framework is a subsystem that enables a network application to apply a service in the network in, in the form of a, um, a policy rather than mechanism. Another abstraction um, on honors is enabled by the southbound interface. Uh, so basically on the southbound interface, Honors really is not, is quite limited, doesn't support as many southbound protocols as Open Daylight. It supports um, OpenFlow, there's NetConf, and also P4, which is not explicitly shown on the figure. Um, it also comes with a distributed core, which makes it very ideal for larger scale deployment. Uh, today, there's a total of nine releases of Honors, which goes to show the extent of community support. Now, in terms of performance, in order for us to, to evaluate the performance differences of these two controllers, uh, we had to select some tools. Uh, so the tools that we selected um, included Mininet, which essentially is an emulation orchestration engine used to create realistic virtual networks on a single host machine. So this, is, uh, this tool is used to emulate your data plane, which is basically your switches, your switching um, layer. So you can run this tool either on a virtual machine, you can, do, you can use the cloud, like your OpenStack, you can use KVM, you can even install it natively on your machine. So it comes standard with three network topology configurations, namely the single topology, which is this one here, uh, linear topology, and also a uh, tree. Um, the second tool that we used was um, the DITG, which stands for the Distributed Internet Traffic Generator. So DITG is a platform used to generate both IPv4 and IPv6 traffic by accurately accurately reproducing the workload of active internet applications. It constitutes um, five components. Uh, it comes with an ITG send, which basically sends, or which generates traffic flows. 
and then the ITG uh, receive component, which receives a single or multiple flows, the log uh, function, which basically stores log information received over TCP or UDP, and also the decoding function, which is used for decoding and analyzing the log files of the experiment. So in order for us to investigate the performance differences of the two controllers, uh, each topology was configured to feature a total of eight hosts, where the first host was configured as the flow generator, and the last host was configured as the, um, the receiver. Uh, voice over IP and DNS flows were generated towards the destination. Um, and then the transport layer protocol was set to UDP. The metrics which we measured included one-way delay, jitter, and packet loss. Each test was repeated 10 times and an average was used for the results. The number of worker threads was kept at one for the duration of our experiments. Now, these are the results. So, figure 1A and 1B represent um, a performance comparison between Honest and Open Daylight when subjected to all three topologies that I've mentioned, meaning the tree topology, the single topology, and the linear topology. The x-axis, right, represents topology and controller. For example, Open Daylight underscore one is representing Open Daylight controller with single topology, and then Open Daylight underscore two represents Open Daylight controller with a linear topology, and similarly, Open Daylight underscore three represents open daylight controller with tree topology, right? So from the results, from the delay results, we've observed that open daylight exhibits worst performance for all configurations. However, open daylight performs better in linear topologies than in tree topologies. So in linear topologies, it would be um, this here. You can see that the delay there For the, for the linear topology is much, way smaller than that of the tree topology for open daylight. However, over, all in all, open daylight performs poorly. It generates very high uh, or poor delay. And then on the uh, JITA side, we, we, we found that open daylight again exhibited a considerably higher JITA than honors for all scenarios. However, for the tree topology, open daylight gave a better jitter than in linear topologies. Let's see the tree topology. It's over here. Um, open daylight clearly did um, exhibit a lower jitter compared to the linear topology. And jitter performance for ONUS is the same for tree and single topologies, as you can see for tree and single topology, the JITA performance um, is the same, did not change. Now, from a packet loss viewpoint, Open Daylight dropped more packets than Honors for all three scenarios, with Honors only dropping packets in linear topologies. So in a nutshell, we can see that Open Daylight um, exhibits a poor quality of service in comparison with Honors. So Honors is a better controller performance-wise for this particular um, scenario. So we believe that um, the reason for this drastic performance difference between Honors and Open Daylight might be a result of Open Daylight excessively high CPU utilization, which we believe is the reason why the performance uh, severely degrades with open daylight. So this means that in order to improve the performance of open daylight, hyperthreading has to be enabled. In other words, instead of using a single thread for computing, multiple threads must be used to improve computational efficiency. So in conclusion, this work evaluated two distributed SDM controllers, namely Honors and Open Daylight. From the feature-based comparison, we recommend the adoption of open daylight since it, it is more feature rich in terms of supported southbound interfaces and vendor support. 
from the performance evaluation comparison, uh, we recommend ONUS because it exhibited the best performance for all scenarios and metrics. Uh, we believe, again, Open Daylight's poor performance was because of its excessive use of uh, CPU resources. Thus, um, in order for the performance to improve with Open Daylight, we believe that hyperthreading has to be enabled when using Open Daylight so that um, the user can enjoy similar performance benefits as those exhibited by owners. So in future, we intend to carry out similar evaluations in an environment running multiple costs with hyperthreading enabled. So that was the, our work and we hope this work was, you know, I, I hope my presentation was um, insightful, it was informative. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to ask. Thank you so much for sitting in and listening to my presentation. Thank you.